Welcome to my shop, my name is Guy, and today I'm going to be making some changes to my Ender 5S1 3D printer. I'm going to install a clipper on it using the Sonic Pad, I'm going to add a webcam, I'm also going to make this much, much quieter. So this is a pretty much stock Ender 5 S1. I did change a few things. My major gripe with this, originally when I reviewed it, was the noise coming out of it. So I've changed some of the fans, and let me show you what I did. One of the first things I did was change out the breakout board. The one that comes with this that hooks up to the main board has these little dinky tiny connectors. I don't know what they're called, and I do tend to change out my fans and hot ends and things like that quite often. So changing all that stuff was a pain. I got this board here, this breakout board from my friend Nathan at Nathan Builds Robots. I highly recommend it if you've got one of these or uh, Ender 3S1, same thing. I can put full-size JST connectors on here. There's also a resistor you can put on here. And for the hot end fans, you can put a five volt fan on here, which I did which is very, very nice because the, the hot end fan is very quiet now. Now behind this metal guard is the new hot end fan and that is a knock to a 4010 and it's five volt and when it's running, it's very, very quiet. Here, let me turn it on. So I'm putting my microphone up to it and you can hear well, not hear how quiet this fan is. quite an improvement over the stock fan. One of the biggest culprits of noise of this machine was the fan for the power supply. Now I did change it out. This is a 60 by 20 knock to a fan and there's a buck converter inside here because this is a 12 volt fan. And I actually lowered it to about 10 volts. So this is really super quiet. The stock fan that comes with this on the case for the chip is actually pretty quiet and I didn't need to change that out. But Changing out this fan and the fan on the hot end really, really made a difference as far as the sound of this machine. One of the things I didn't change was the blower fan on this. And this thing is pretty loud at full speed. And the reason I didn't change that because I really want to show how this machine works with mostly stock stuff when adding clipper to it. So let me turn this on and you can get an idea of what it sounds like and bring the microphone close to it. Now I might be changing this out eventually for two 5015 fans and get some quieter ones. Uh, again, my buddy Nathan from Nathan Builds Robots has designed one called the El Pablo and I just haven't put it on yet. I really wanted to have this thing tested with just a stock fan. Now another very obvious thing I did was I got rid of that black PC build plate this came with and I had one of these sitting around, which is a regular textured PEI sheet. Much better, it releases the prints a lot better. The other sheet was really sticky, which is really good, but you couldn't get the damn prints off of it. Again, this is much nicer to have. Installing Clipper on the Ender 5 couldn't be easier with the Sonic Pad. First, I'm gonna select the language, accept the privacy agreement, Let's choose my region, then find my network, which is Beast, enter my password and connect. It's also going to give you a chance to rename the Sonic Pad if you so choose. Select the printer, in this case the Ender 5 S1. I'm going to insert the SD card. I'm going to write the firmware to the SD card. I'm going to take that SD card out and put it into the machine. I'm going to power the printer on. Then I'm going to connect the printer's USB cable to the Sonic Pad. And it's going to run a self-test after it connects. Then it's going to want to run a Z-axis calibration and bed leveling. So heat the bed first, then go through the auto level, then accept it. And that's it. Everything is installed. Now I want to configure the input shaper or resonance testing. The first thing to do is to take the cable and plug it into the back of the sonic pad. Then I'm going to take the other end of the plug and plug it into the accelerometer that's attached to the tool head. I choose configure. Advanced Options, Measuring Residences. Then I'm going to choose the Ender 5, of course. 
and then it's going to check the status to make sure it sees the accelerometer. Hit OK and then it will start to shake the machine head. It's going to start vibrating the X, then the Y. And when it's done, just accept it, save it, and then it'll restart and you're done. Now here's some benches I printed out. This first one here was printed out with the stock profile that comes with the stock Cura with the Ender 5S1. It came out pretty good. There's some cooling issues right here. And right here, there's some ghosting. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. But otherwise, it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And this took about 64 minutes to print. This benchy here was sliced using the brand new Prusa Slicer 2.6 Alpha 5. Boy, that's a mouthful. I did do the uh, pressure advance and also the resonance testing on the, the system. So those are in there. And that ringing that was up here was gone. This claimed it was printing at about 120 millimeters per second at about 500 millimeters cubed acceleration. This took 52 minutes. Cooling issues are solved down here. The layer lines look really, really good. There is a little bit of stringing, however, but that can be taken out, I think, pretty easy with some tuning. Now this one here was using the same stock settings in the new Prusa Slicer. However, I changed the acceleration to 1500. And this benchy took 46 minutes to print out. Again, the layer lines look very, very good. Still a little bit of issue with the cooling up here. A little bit of stringing. A lot of that can be taken out with some fine tuning of the filament. But again, looks very, very good. Now this last one here was again using Prusa Slicer and a stock profile, except with 5,000 acceleration. You can see a little bit of inconsistencies right here. Still good on the cooling. Now this bench he took 32 minutes, which is really super fast. And I'm pretty happy with it. I think after I tune the filament in and uh, some more of the settings and the slicer, I can get rid of the stringing and I can get rid of all this. But uh, I'm very, very happy with it. So adding clipper to this machine and setting the resonance and also the pressure advance really made a big difference in these benches. It cut my printing time in half almost, and uh, I'm pretty excited to see how much more I can get out of this. Here's another test print, and this basically is a 200 by 200 square, and this is the first layer that came down. I'm actually printing two layers on it to give an idea. As you can see, that first layer is perfect. Speaking of perfect first layer, you should check out my new podcast that I do with Nathan from Nathan Builds Robots and JJ Shankles, now available on Apple Podcasts. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Really good listen. Subscribe to it. Another thing I can add, because I'm going to be putting a sonic pad on this, is a USB camera. I want to mount it right here. And I printed out this mount for it and a couple drop-in nuts and I'll just screw right into this. Now with that installed, I can just plug that right into the back of the sonic pad. So with that plugged in, I can just go over here, go camera, and there's my camera. We also have the ability to do time lapse on this, which is pretty cool. I haven't tried it out yet, but I will. Another cool thing I can do with that cam, because this machine I think is going to live out here in the garage, is I can do it right from an app on my phone, 
or I can view it from the interface on the web interface for the computer. Another thing that's a little annoying is this pad itself. Now I love the big screen on it. It's very bright, it's very easy to read, especially for an old dude like me. But I'm constantly moving around, there's wires all over the place, I really don't like that. So I found these, and these I got from uh, the Aurora Tech channel, did a video on this also. And this is the print that they came up with. And this just replaces the feet in the back, and then drops into here. So I'm going to be mounting this to that. So I've got that centered, tightened down, and now it's not flopping around all over the place. Now this piece of plastic I took out from the channel that the uh, Sonic Pad is screwed into. I'm just going to clip off a couple of these pieces. I'm going to use that to hide the wires inside here for the camera. So I've got those wires tucked up behind here now. That's one thing I really don't like about this particular setup is that I got a wire sticking out of the side here, and then I got another one sticking out over here for where the USB connector is for the machine. So no matter what, I've still got stuff sticking out of the sides, which again, really doesn't thrill me very much but it is what it is. So here's the machine with all the upgrades I did. I really am happy I have the Sonic Pad with Clipper on this machine. Um, just using the stock Prusa slicer settings and changing the acceleration to 5000 really made a huge difference. This machine is a lot faster now and it prints really, really well. I just have to tune it a little bit to get rid of the string. But other than that, very, very nice. The machine's a lot quieter now that I changed out the fans. That breakout board from my buddy Nathan at Nathan Builds Robots was huge. Um, the hot end fan and the fan for the power supplier changed out. And now that I have the camera, I think I can leave this machine out in the garage with a, a cover over it and print out here so it's not my office making a lot of noise.